Today, class, we'll be taking a look at position and velocity versus time graph examples. Let's take a look. So Madison, my daughter, was nice enough to help me out with some of these again. So for all the videos that you see where there's a basketball hoop, I want you to use the basketball hoop as your reference position for zero. Okay, so everything to the right would be to the positive direction, and to the left would be to the negative direction, with the basketball hoop again being the zero. So take a look at Madison's motion here. What we're going to do is try and find a graph that we can match. Start. Stop. Start. Stop. Was Madison's motion best represented by this position versus time, graph A, graph B, or graph C? Take a second if you need to to pause it and go back to watch the video again, but pick which graph you think best represents her motion. Okay, the answer actually, the correct answer is A, in the position versus time, graph A. She started actually to the left of the basketball hoop, so her starting position should be a negative position, and A actually was the only one that had a negative position at negative two meters. She then moved to the right at a constant rate and ending about two meters away. So A shows a positive slope with her starting at the negative two position and ending at the positive two position. When we take a look at graph B, it has the same slope as A, however, her starting position was at zero. And clearly, she started to the left of the basketball hoop. If we look at graph C, it shows her starting position as a positive two. Now, it also shows a negative slope, and that would indicate that she was actually moving from right to left, which was the opposite of what she actually did. Let's take a look at another example of some motion. Was Madison's motion best represented by this position versus time graph A, graph B, or graph C? The correct answer is C. Starting at the zero position, Maddie moved to the right at a relatively slow rate, which should show a positive slope, but a flatter slope than when she went from the right to the left. She held her position from four to five seconds for one second total and then jogged back to the left. And she jogged back at a much quicker pace, so we should expect to see a steeper slope, which is what we see here in C. The other thing is that it's a negative slope, so it's showing that she was moving to the left. So the correct answer is C. Let's take a look at graph A. Graph A has her starting at the zero position as well, but it shows her with a negative slope. So this is actually just the mirror of what the real thing that actually occurred. She didn't go to the left slowly, stop, and then go back to the right uh, with, a, with a faster pace, which is what this graph is showing. It was actually the opposite. And if we look at graph B, graph B looks like it could be right because the first four seconds is a, is a um, more shallow slope showing that she was going slower than she was for the last two seconds but the problem with this graph is that it shows that she ends back at the zero position so she would have had to have stopped back at the basketball hoop which she clearly didn't. Alright let's take another look at example from Maddie and this time we're gonna have some acceleration involved. Was Madison's motion best represented by graph A, graph B, or graph C this time? 
The correct answer is C again. Madison actually started out without any velocity, but in started to increase that velocity, she was accelerating in the positive direction. So nice job, Maddie. It's, it's pretty difficult to try and move with a constant acceleration, which means you're constantly changing and adding to your speed. So if we were to take tangent lines of this, this curve here on this position versus time graph, at the beginning we could see that the, the tangent line would be flat. And as I track with time on this, the tangent line continues to increase in slope, indicating that she, her speed was increasing. And this is exactly what happened. You can see that she sped up as she continued to go on to the right, or positive velocity was increasing. If I look at graph A, we have a linear line, linear slope that is indicating that she's changing position with time, but at a constant rate. This would indicate there was no acceleration, and clearly from the video, she starts out moving very slowly and then increases her speed and velocity with time. So graph A can't be correct because it is indicating that there is no acceleration. In B, there is a curve here, and that's telling me that there is some kind of acceleration, but if you look closely, let's look at the tangent lines to see if we get a better understanding of what would be happening for graph B. Well, at time zero, the tangent line is actually its steepest. And if we track the tangent line along this curve with time, what's happening is, is that the, the slope of the line is actually getting flatter and flatter and all the way to the end here at 2.5 seconds, it's basically a flat curve, meaning that the velocity would be zero. So this is actually a curve that shows a negative acceleration with somebody that was moving with a positive velocity. In other words, they slowed down and stopped. So it does show acceleration, but not the acceleration that Maddie had that actually increased her velocity because both her acceleration and her velocity were in the same direction, causing her to speed up. Okay, let's take a look, one more look at another example. This time Madison's going to be on a bike and we're going to be looking at the velocity versus time graph. So watch closely to the video to see if you can determine what the graph would look like. Okay, if you caught it there, Madison actually hit her brakes for about a second. So is the graph of the velocity versus time graph A, in this case the best representation of her motion, or is it B, or C? Well the correct answer is actually B. So if we look at B, Madison was moving as she came into the frame at 6 meters per second. She then applied her brakes for one second and that caused a negative acceleration. That friction caused an acceleration in the opposite direction that she was moving, causing her to slow down. But then when she released her brake, she coasted out of the frame uh, at a constant velocity, in this case showing four meters per second. So, but she was still moving to the right. So she just slowed down during that braking period to a, to a slower velocity, which is what graph B shows. If we look at graph A, it shows that she was moving at 2 meters per second, which is hard to tell that whether or not that was accurate, but it's actually a little slower than what she was really moving at. But what really is the best indication of why A doesn't work is that while she had a negative acceleration to slow her down, it slowed her down to actually 0 meters per second. Remember, this is a velocity versus time graph, so you can just read the actual velocity that she was moving with right off of the graph. So what A is showing is at 1.5 seconds, her velocity was actually zero for the rest of the way. So she would have had to have come to a stop and then stayed there, which wasn't what occurred. Now if we look at graph C, graph C starts shows that she was starting with a 3 meters per second. Again, hard to tell, but let's just start from there. Then I see a negative acceleration for one second, which makes sense. But Something is, is happening here when we cross over that zero line. We, we go into the negative region of the negative, so we have negative velocity here. And what that really means is that 
we should be moving in the opposite direction that we were all, she was moving in. Anytime that you cross over the zero line on a velocity versus time graph, not only does that mean that you, for a split second, you actually stopped moving, but it means that you change directions. So what this graph is showing you is that she was actually moving to the right, slowed down to the point where she stopped and turned around and then sped back up in the opposite direction. And now we'll be moving in the negative direction at negative three meters per second. So that's clearly not what happened, but it's a good understanding to look at this and, and keep in mind that anytime you cross over the zero line on a velocity versus time graph, you actually have to stop and turn around and change directions of motion. So thank you for looking at these graphs with me today, and I'll see you soon.